your consciousness and existence is built on love. It is like the common thread that is woven throughout everyone. And a lot of the suffering in this world is due to the fact that we've just forgotten that we have this thread woven between all of us, but it truly is our existence. Our existence is built on love. It's unconditional. It's not something we need to go out and get or go out and find or go out and accumulate something that we already have and we've just forgotten that we have it it's our natural state love is our natural state so it's just about remembering our truth and releasing the things that make us forget our truth welcome to alignment adventures this is a podcast where we explore what it means to live a fulfilling aligning and present life i'm your host lindsay tanner and i am so grateful that you are here Hello my loves and welcome back to Alignment Adventures. I am so happy and grateful that you are here with me today. I am here for a good old fashioned solo episode, but if you missed last week's episode, make sure you go and check it out with Kim Orphan. It was a beautiful, expansive, just aligning conversation. I love having interviews on the podcast and I have a few more coming up, so make sure you are subscribed if you are not already. If you're a long time listener, thank you. I appreciate you so much. And if you haven't yet, just stop and like go and tell someone about this podcast or send someone a message that you think would enjoy one of these episodes because it it's just one of the most beautiful ways to help this show reach the people it needs to reach and i am so appreciative of it every time you do so now today i want to talk about a topic that is probably hot right now because it is february we are in valentine's day season and i talked about this on a recent youtube video i did where i mention different ways to thrive in winter so we're still in a winter at least for the next month or so so if you feel like you need those pieces of advice go and check out my personal youtube channel check out that video but i really suggested celebrating this holiday and really just this month where there's a collective energy of love which we're going to talk about the real definition of that here in a second in a way that may be different than you celebrated it in the past. Like I want to go deeper than just like the lovey-dovey stuff, celebrating with a partner if you have one, or even if you don't, even more of a reason to celebrate the true meaning of, I don't even know what the meaning of this holiday is, honestly, but just like the true meaning of love. So today we're going to talk about some ways to actually practice self-love and my intention is to go way deeper than like those fluffy things you see on social media or whatever that's my intention at least is to go deeper in some ways that you can actually show yourself some love so this is inspired by a book i recently finished which i think i'm going to do a whole like summary of on my youtube channel so again go and subscribe there if you haven't yet i share so many different things there but it is the book, The Fifth Agreement. It is the second installment of the four agreements, and these two books are just classics to me. They are so simple, yet so profound. It literally took me months to finish this. It's one of the smallest books I have on my bookshelf, but I just really wanted to take my time and let it soak in because the takeaways from this book, the lessons from this book, the remembrance from this book, that's what it is. We're just remembering these things are so profound. So highly recommend checking those out and be on the lookout for a video kind of going through all the takeaways from that book or just go and get the book yourself, get it from the library, borrow it from a friend. You can borrow it from me. If you know me personally, I would be so happy to let you borrow it. Anyways, it's inspired by that. And this month, at the yoga studio that i am teaching at or really it's more of a wellness retreat is what they call it the healing path we talked about that last week with the owner of the healing path my theme this month for all my classes is self-love and again i just want to dive deeper into this topic because i feel like it's thrown around a lot and i just really want to help you embody it because you deserve to show yourself some self-love. That's why I created this podcast is you deserve to live the life of your dreams, the life that you desire. You would deserve to enjoy your life and do all the things that bring you joy. 
So let's talk about love for a little bit here. And I actually just re-listened to an episode where I talk about the true definition of love. So if you want, you can go back and listen to that. I think it's episode 65, What Does Love Really Mean? That will dive even deeper into that topic. But really, love is just indescribable. We think of it as this thing we share with the people in our lives, which we do. We share it really with everyone, but especially the people in our lives that we love, (laughs) hence the word. Um, But it really goes beyond words. Like the way we can describe it is almost indescribable. And it's just so much deeper than that romantic type we see in the movies and all that. Your consciousness and existence is built on love. It is like the common thread that is woven throughout everyone. And a lot of the suffering in this world is due to the fact that we've just forgotten that we have this thread woven between all of us, but it truly is our existence. Our existence is built on love. It's unconditional. Like if you listen to any near-death experience videos, a lot of them talk about experiencing this feeling of unconditional love and how it's just so natural. And it's not something we need to go out and get or go out and find or go out and accumulate. It's something that we already have and we've just forgotten that we have it. It's our natural state. Love is our natural state. So it's just about remembering our truth and releasing the things that make us forget our truth. So let's get into my practical steps on how to actually practice self-love. First one is so good. I think I mentioned it in an episode that I did with my friend Demi. We've recorded quite a few episodes and she's going to come back on, I believe, soon. So keep an eye out for that. But that is to pay for your mistakes only once. I heard this in this book and I've heard it somewhere else too. It must be a common thing thrown around, but we are one of the only species that continually pays for our mistakes. And that is very apparent in today's society. If you've done something wrong, you can get cast out, canceled, they call it. But we do that to ourselves too, right? We can, we can cancel ourselves. We do something quote unquote wrong and we punish ourselves. For the rest of our lives. It's just on repeat. How we did something wrong. How we said something we shouldn't have. How we could have done something differently. Do yourself a kindness. Show yourself self-love. Come back to that truth. And pay for your mistake only once. And if it's coming from that perspective of true love and kindness. And being loving to yourself. You're not even going to quote unquote pay that much. But you're going to acknowledge the mistake. You're going to learn from it and you're going to keep going on with your life. Guilt and shame serves no one, especially you. Of course we have to acknowledge when we've hurt someone. Of course we have to acknowledge when we maybe didn't show up as our best selves. Acknowledge it, learn from it, and keep going. Stop paying for your mistakes continuously. Stop punishing yourself for the rest of your life for something you did five years ago, 10 years ago, last week, yesterday, five minutes ago. Learn from it. Let it help you grow. Let it help you remember your truth and then keep moving on with your life. Enough said for that one. Stop paying for your mistakes again and again. (laughs) Only pay once if that. Next tip I have for actually practicing self-love is question the judge, victim, and rescuer in your mind. So this was mentioned back in an episode with Suzanne Franzen. She mentioned the drama triangle, which I had never heard of. It blew my mind and was such an interesting concept. Google it if you want to, but it's this triangle showing like perspectives that we commonly take or that our ego commonly takes, which is either the judge, victim, or the rescuer. It is no secret that we have a lot of different voices going on inside our head at any time and just a lot of different stories, a lot of different narratives. Question every thought that goes through your mind. I know that seems like a lot or it could take a lot of energy. It definitely could, but especially the thoughts that have that judgy or victimized or even self-righteous tone to them. Question those thoughts. Are those your truth? Do you want them to be your truth? Is there evidence to back them up? Or is this the story that you've assumed from your mind? That's one of the four agreements from the original book. The four agreements is it never make assumptions. So 
A lot of the stories can come from assumptions or another agreement. Don't take things personal. We can take things personal a lot and make stories up from that. So a beautiful way to show yourself some self-love is question those thoughts. And along with that, something that's going to help you, I think, in you know getting away from those mind stories is be in your body more than your mind. I say that a lot in my yoga practices because yoga and other physical activities, other somatic practices and modalities really help you get in your body, which is such a nice feeling for you because we are constantly in our minds. We live in a society that is mostly up in its mind and has forgotten about the intelligence and the wisdom and the kindness and the love in our body. So a good way to help you question those thoughts in your mind, the question, the thoughts that come from the judge, the victim and rescuer is spend more time in your body than in your mind. The third one, I am speaking directly to myself, but another way to practice self-love is to stop trying to convince other people of anything. Like just stop trying to convince people. Be on your own path because everyone's on their own path. Find your own truth and embody it. Be the example. It's not your job to convince people. It's your job to learn the lessons, embody your truths, and just be that example. Be that vibration that you want to see more of in the world. Like I said, I am talking directly to myself in this one. So if you ever feel a lot of suffering or discomfort of like trying to convince the people around you of certain things, just stop. Stop like putting that weight on yourself, that burden on yourself. It's not your job to convince anyone of anything. And most of the time when we try to convince people, like Kim talked about last week, sometimes we can come off preachy and no one wants to come off preachy. Uh, So stop trying to convince people of things and just embody it yourself. That's how we change the world is by changing ourselves. That is how we show more love in the world is by showing love to ourselves. The next one is like a direct agreement from the four agreements, but it's so good. And that is be impeccable with your word. Now, I questioned if I should use the word impeccable. If you Google it, it means like without flaw. We're not aiming towards like perfectionism here, which I have a really good episode about perfectionism coming up. So be on the lookout for that. But being impeccable with your word is just being kinder with your words, speaking more truth, less of those mind stories that we talk about, less using your actual physical words and the words inside your mind that come from the judge, victim, and rescuer, right? And especially no more gossiping. That's just such a waste of our precious energy. And I am guilty of this and I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm not going to punish myself a million times like I talked about in the first tip, but I get caught up in it because it's very common for people to be talking about other people, right? There are whole businesses and industries built on this, but it just really doesn't serve us. It really doesn't. So along with not gossiping, not gossiping about yourself, not judging yourself, just being kinder to yourself with your thoughts and your words. And an interesting part of this I learned from Mia Magic. If you don't know who she is, she's like a real life witch, which I know I talk about being witchy on here a lot, but I just love her energy. She has so many magical tidbits over on her Instagram if you're interested in following her. But she talks about how the word spelling, like spelling of words, and the word spells obviously are connected because when we use our words, we are casting spells. Like that is how powerful your word is. And that's why it's one of the four agreements because when you talk, you are literally casting spells in your life. So just consider that. Like what kind of spells do you want to cast in your life? And can you just be more mindful with the words that you speak? Use more expansive words and less constricting words. All right, next one. It's one of my intentions for 2024, and I just think such a beautiful way to show self-love, and that is pick up a book more than you pick up your phone, or literally pick up anything else more than you pick up your phone. It could be a journal, magazine, anything, literally anything besides your phone. I know we think we need our phones way more than we do. We do it unconsciously. Hide the TikTok, Instagram, Facebook icons on your phone for this month so you're not going to them subconsciously and just like focus on something else. 
even like when you're going to the bathroom, TMI, but we all do it, right? Instead of grabbing your phone, grab your book, grab a magazine, grab something else, or just be with your thoughts. Practice observing your thoughts. Practice questioning your thoughts. Journal. Such an unused time, right? (laughs) Again, I know TMI, but just any way you can be on your phone less is such a beautiful act of self-love. Trust me on this one and just try it out. Try it out for a little bit. I promise you'll be happier. You'll be more connected to yourself. It just serves you in so many ways. Now, the next one may seem like one of those cheesy ones you see on social media, which I said I wasn't going to do, but it needs to be said, and that is be kinder to your body. Just take a second to think about all the things your body does automatically. Like you don't have to think about breathing or digesting or sending signals from your brain to your body or growing your fingernails or seeing things, right? It just does it. It just does it. Like acknowledge all the things that your body is doing for you every single day and just send in some love. Send all your cells that are working together to form those tissues and the organs some love and gratitude. And some other ways that you can show your body love and kindness. Again, these may seem surface level, but I have to mention them. I think it's so funny. I heard this the other day on the Today Show, how something is trending called ingredient dinners, and that is like making dinner from ingredients like whole foods i'm like why is this a trend this should just be like the normal right (laughs) instead of making like processed dinners but anyways i just i don't know why that annoys me so much but i had to mention on here make more ingredient dinners or lunches or snacks like more whole foods or something that brings me so much joy in a way that i show myself self-love is making things not from scratch but like if i want say cinnamon rolls, which I'm totally going to make cinnamon rolls for Valentine's day and shape them in little hearts for my family. Like you're not, you're still eating yummy things, right? You don't have to like restrict yourself all the time. Again, this is a bigger topic, but like enjoy food, but maybe you can make it yourself because when you make things yourself from ingredients, that's automatically going to be better for you because it has less like preservatives and processed stuff. So that's just like a fun thing I do. And I, enjoy cooking and baking now which I know not everyone does but for me it's a way to like show love for my family show love for myself so can you take maybe something that you're craving or wanting or wanting to indulge on which I hate to even use that word but something you're wanting and can you make it yourself that's such a beautiful way to show love to your body and show love for yourself and the next thing is movement. Now, I just have to say this again. I feel like this is such a just overused reminder, but let's talk about like exercise for a second. There are a million ways to move your body. If you aren't exercising because you don't enjoy it, do something else. Like don't go to the gym if you don't enjoy it, but do something else that you do enjoy, whether it's dancing, playing with your kids, chasing your kids, playing with your dog, yoga, Pilates, bar, looking up a workout on YouTube, going outside, going to a trampoline park, walking with an audiobook or a podcast. That's one of my favorite things to do ever. But just move your body, even like cleaning your house or like tidying up your house as a form of movement. Just intentionally move your body every single day, even doing a little bit of a stretch in the morning and at night. Sometimes that's like the only intentional movement I get in. And that is just so nourishing for my body and such a beautiful way to show love and appreciation and gratitude for my body and all the things it's doing for me. And I can just tell it's so grateful. It feels so good when I stretch, when I do some yoga. So just my gentle reminder to you, I promise the rest won't be as like cliche as that one. Okay. All right. The next way to actually practice self-love is just acknowledge that your life has seasons. Again, just like the seasons outside, we have so many seasons of life. And this season of life for you may be your favorite or may not be your favorite or may just be okay. But the thing about seasons is they don't last forever. And it's your perspective that makes the season what it is. So just acknowledge where you are. Acknowledge how far you've come acknowledge where you want to go or maybe reevaluate where you want to go or even more interesting be open to where you want to go let life surprise you 
and just acknowledge that it's a season. Life has many different beautiful seasons. They're all beautiful in their own way. And just acknowledge the season that you are currently in. The next one is also one of my intentions of 2024. And I feel like I've been doing a pretty good job of it. And it's such a beautiful way to show yourself self-love. And that is entangle fun into as many things as you can. Now, I've talked about the importance of fun in so many episodes, so I'm not going to hit on that one too hard because we know that when we're having fun, we're releasing resistance, we're in a high vibration, it serves everyone, it makes us happier, it makes us in alignment, which influences the world around us. But like, just think about how can you incorporate more fun into your life? I feel like I'm so grateful. I've been having so much fun with the live yoga classes that I've been doing. I've been having so much fun with Arlo. I mean, that can be its own beast sometimes trying to entertain Arlo and find fun things for us to do. But when I embrace like what I'm doing with him and just try to make things fun for him or when I hear him laugh, it just brings me so much joy and even having fun with steven like the other night we played a board game which sounds sounds so simple and you may be like i don't have time for board games so think of something else but a lot of times at night when we put our load down we'll like go our separate ways because that time is precious to us and maybe i have some things I need to get done for the podcast or the YouTube channel or whatever, or my yoga classes, right? I have to prep something. So a lot of times we spend that time separately, but last weekend I was like, Hey, should we hang out tonight? And he's like, what? We're going to actually hang out, which we're with each other a lot of the time anyways, like during the day with Arlo. Um, but we took some time and played a board game and it was really fun. And of course, Steven won because he's always winning games and that's okay. One of these days I will beat him, but it was just really fun. Okay, another way that I've been having fun that I just thought of is I've been reading more nonfiction, specifically fantasy romance. The A Court of Thorns and Roses series, I'm on the third book right now. And people have been telling me to read this book for years and I finally listened. I was a huge Twilight fan back in my teenage years and honestly, this series is maybe better than Twilight. I know those are strong words, but it's just taking me back to that time when I just read for fun. And I have a lot of like stories around reading that I'm not a good reader. And when I read Twilight, it really got me back into reading. And as you guys know, I read a lot of nonfiction. I read a lot of spirituality books. I read The Fifth Agreement, which, you know, is nonfiction. It's a very short and simple and profound book, but it's just fun to get back into nonfiction and read something just for fun. And what's even more fun is that my friend is starting to read it. She's the one that actually introduced me to Twilight back in the day. And it's just totally taking me back to Spanish class in high school when we used to like geek out over this book. And it's just fun to share this experience with her. So whether it's a fantasy book or a science fiction book or a sports book or whatever, this goes back to reading more than being on your phone. Find books that you want to read. There are so many options out there for you. So just think of different ways or unique ways or creative ways that you can entangle fun into the different things that you are doing, especially the things that you may not be enjoying. Can you get rid of those things or release those things or make those things a little bit fun? Like make it a little challenge for yourself and such a beautiful way to show yourself self-love. Now, the next one is not really a surprise. I talk about this a lot, but it's crucial. And that is allow yourself to feel whatever it is you're feeling. Your feelings are valid. No matter what you are feeling, they are valid. That doesn't mean you have to stay there forever, but your feelings are valid. It doesn't mean you have to make a whole story and identity around your feelings, and your feelings are valid. I'm trying not to use the word but there because I feel like when you use the word but, it invalidates the first part of the sentence. Your feelings are valid and you don't have to identify them. Your feelings are valid and you don't have to feel them forever. Your feelings are valid and you can use them to guide you. Use that and to help empower you as you're feeling your feelings. And just acknowledge how you're feeling them. Are you feeling them in a way that's productive for your life or not productive? Like, are you taking your feelings out on people? Are you using them to be resentful or maybe like exploding on people or saying things you're not proud of? Like, Again, don't punish yourself forever. Just be aware that is such a beautiful gift. 
and think about some healthier ways you can feel your feelings. So many ways that you can feel your feelings. And if you need help with this, please reach out. Like we can just have a conversation about it. I am here for you always. This is such an important step on your alignment journey and huge, crucial to showing yourself self-love. Now, the next one I just love so much, and that is allow yourself to create. We are natural creators. Like it is just hardwired into our DNA to create something. And I think is a huge reason why we are here. It doesn't matter what you are creating. A lot of times we think of like artwork, like painting or music. Yes, you can create those things, but it could also be a podcast. It could also be children, a family, vibrations, emotions, and ambiance. Maybe it's a book, an email, whatever. We are constantly creating in our life. So can you use that creative energy that we all have to create something fun or create something that you're wanting to create? Every single one of us has that creative life force energy surging throughout every single one of our cells. And I think a lot of times those negative feelings or even anxiety comes from us not allowing that creative energy out. So just like think about how you can be creative. Maybe it is a craft. Maybe it's a Valentine's Day craft you're going to do with your kids. (laughs) That sounds cheesy. I'm going to do that with Arlo. But also my podcast is a huge way that I create. The way I show up in my life is a huge way that I am creating. We are constantly creating. So can you allow yourself to create in a way that is fun and expansive and intentional for you? Like I always say on here, you are the creator of your life. You are creating your life every second that you are alive with your existence, right? Your actions, your thoughts, your emotions, your perspective. You are the creator. So allow yourself to create the life that you desire. Allow yourself to create the moment that you desire. And just be intentional with this one. Bonus to this is allow yourself to be bad or maybe not the best at something. Maybe you want to try something new. I feel like this is such a beautiful month to try something new. We're like coming off the New Year's energy. We're in winter. We may want to pick up a new whatever it may be. Try something new and just allow yourself to be bad at it. That's okay. You don't have to be the best at everything and you don't have to be perfect at everything. So such a beautiful way to show yourself some self-love. Now, this next one is a direct quote from my book, and I just loved it so much. I'm not highlighting in my books anymore in case I do lend them to a friend. I want them to have their own interpretation of it. So I've been keeping notes on my phone, and I saw this quote, and I was like, yes, this is perfect for this episode. But the quote is, to have a love affair with life. I don't know, just something about that is such a deep remembering for me and just like reminds me how complex we make things sometimes like just enjoy being alive can you enjoy the juiciness of life can you enjoy the little things of life like great conversations and amazing food and the sunshine on your skin a great book that you're reading or connecting with your partner on a deeper level or connecting with your friend i don't know just like can you have a love affair with life can you just like Juice your life to the fullest and just enjoy every moment. I don't know. Something about that quote just really speaks to me. Have a love affair with life, especially your life. Now, I want to leave you with this little tidbit. This is like the main summary that I got from this book I just finished. And I feel like it's such a beautiful way to end this conversation about showing yourself self-love. But you are the creator of your life. I know I've said that like 101 times, probably a million and one times. But just think about it. Are you creating a dream or a nightmare? Because you get to choose and you get to decide the life that you are creating. So I hope these little reminders and tidbits of how to actually show yourself self-love served you and helped you. I would love to hear your takeaways on this episode. So if it feels aligned, please share any takeaways with me on Instagram through your stories, or you can just DM me at Lindsay with an A, M as in Michelle Tanner. If you are new here, please subscribe. And like I mentioned before, 
show some love for the podcast by like sending this episode to someone that you think needs to hear or maybe a past episode um, sharing that is just such such a beautiful way and free way to support the podcast also if you have not yet you can also rate and review the podcast another beautiful way to support the work that i'm doing here and helping everyone embody more self-love and find their own alignment journey uh, so if that feels aligning please do so but i'm sending you all so much love especially this month but every single month don't let like societal norms of this holiday get you down Really use it as a time to reconnect with yourself and truly connect with the people around you. But I'm sending you all so much love, all the highest vibes, and of course, I will see you in the next episode of Alignment Adventures.